Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this matrix raised to a power. And we're going to come up with a simple formula for this matrix raised to a power. The first method that we'll look at um, this time around is one that uses a diagonal matrix. We're going to take our matrix, call it A, I'm raising it to the nth power, but we're going to rewrite A as a matrix P times a diagonal matrix. It'll look like this, 0, 5, 0, 0. So only this diagonal right here has entries that are non-zero. And then times P inverse. So we're going to find a matrix P that's invertible, a 2 by 2. Um, so it has an inverse here. And why? how is that going to be useful? Well. Let's just look, for instance, take a squared. This would be, and call this D. This would be the same thing as P, D, P inverse, P, D, P inverse. Notice how those cancel. So we end up getting D squared, P, P inverse. In the same way, A to the N will be P, D to the N, P inverse. We've changed the problem to raising a diagonal matrix like this one to a power. Now, how do you take, how do you do that? Um, how do you raise a diagonal matrix to a power? Well, let's just, let's just try it. I mean, just generally take A, B, 0, 0, and let's just multiply once like this. Notice what's happening is, <clears throat> is we're taking, so what do we do to replace this column? We replace this column with A times that column and zero times this column. And we'll end up just getting A squared in the top and zero. Similarly, try it out. Let's see, this column is replaced by zero times the first column plus B times the second column. But you end up just getting a B squared and a zero. Look what happened the entries just raised to that power. In fact, in general, um, if I were to raise this matrix to the nth power, I'd simply get A, N, B, N. Great. So diagonal matrices are great for raising to a power N. So we just change it to that. So that's kind of the goal. We're going to find some diagonal matrix that makes that work. So how are we going to do that? Well, here's our matrix A. <clears throat> and we're going to do this by looking at a polynomial that you can throw this matrix into that, um, that is zero. And that being zero actually will give us everything that we need. Um, and we're going to do this uh, using, and we're going to using ideas called eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but we'll get to that. We'll see what those are and how they work. It depends on how you look at something. Um, what, whether it is challenging or not. So let's take a look at this. So what, what we're going to do is actually, if we were to take um, <clears throat> and pretend like X is acting like this matrix, think about X is X is, I mean, it, it's like a scalar. It's like a number, right? That you can just multiply into things. So it's kind of like we're pretending that this is like a variable X. Now that pretending, is the same thing as calling it um, this matrix. Because this matrix right here, well, think about what this does to a vector. Take any vector at all, what does it do? It multiplies A by X and B times X. I mean, in other words, the action of X in here is behaving very much like a scalar. Um, so to this vector, multiplying in and multiplying to each component. So <clears throat> what we'd like is to say that this is the same as that matrix, which means that their difference is going to behave like zero. So their difference behaves like zero. So let's take, let's take this matrix minus that one. You'll end up getting X minus one, minus two, minus two, X minus four. See what we did? We just took this matrix, made it negative, and then added X to the diagonals. Okay, same thing as taking this matrix and subtracting off that matrix. So this matrix should behave like zero. How does that help us get a polynomial that behaves like zero? 
because that's what the promise was. And somehow that polynomial is going to help us with that power. Um, so we'll, well, let's see. Well, <clears throat> without working through the, the details um, very, too much, at least in this case, if we were to take the determinant of this matrix, we should get zero. Um, well, especially since this right here is behaving like zero, you can imagine that any, any matrix that is zero has a zero determinant. So actually, we'll get a polynomial from that that's going to be zero, because the determinant of a zero matrix, of course, is zero. So therefore, this polynomial will be zero. Great. So we get a polynomial that's zero just from that fact that this matrix is zero. So let's take its determinant. This times this would end up giving, so we have uh, x minus 1 times x minus 4, and then minus um, positive 4, so minus 4, work this out, x squared um, minus x minus 4, so minus 5x, um, and then we have a plus 4 minus 4, which cancel. So we end up just getting this, which factors. We're going to use the fact that it factors. It's kind of a nice idea right here. We know that this is always equal to zero. So the matrix times the matrix minus five. Well, what does this five mean? Okay, well, if we interpret this back, so X we're looking at like as, as a scalar, but if we interpret this X back as a matrix, because we're assuming that they're the same, um, I mean, this, take a look at what this looks like. So this looks like one, two, two, four times and then here, so x minus 5. So let's see. So that means 5 is like a scalar. OK, so this is like the matrix minus a scalar. Notice how we took a scalar here, kind of that. This. So what if we just replace x with 5? I mean, that's what the action of a scalar multiple is, right? Um, if you multiply a vector by 5, you have 5a, five 5b. Five how do you get that? Well, the matrix that would give it to you would have a 5 here and a 5 here. So we think of the same thing. So pretty much what we're doing is we're now we're going to be taking the matrix and subtracting off five on the diagonals. So we have one minus five, four minus five, two, two. All right, so let's replace that with what it is, just illustrating what we're doing here. So we have one minus five is negative four and four minus five is negative one. Okay, great. So how does this help us? Well, for one, notice that you know that this matrix multiplication is going to give you the zero vector, or, or actually it's going to give you the zero matrix, right? See that zero, kind of a zero scalar would be a zero on diagonals. All right. And this tells you uh, quite a bit, um, in particular, this matrix times this column is going to be the zero column. This matrix times that column is going to be the zero column. All right. So thinking about this a little bit, let's just erase this up here for a second and let's get some room. Kind of what we're looking at is we're looking at x minus zero times x minus five. Now, these guys will give names. We'll call them eigenvalues. So for this eigenvalue, we call anything over anything in this, anything over here, any column in this matrix over here, when you multiply it by this, we'll give you a zero column. So we're going to call any column over here and any multiple of any column or anything in the span of the columns in here, any combination of them that you can add together. We're going to call those, the columns here, eigenvectors for the eigenvalue zero. So let's try to figure that out. So zero is an eigenvalue. Let's come up with one simple eigenvector for it. Well, let's just choose this column right here two negative one, which is in here. So two negative one, this would be like an eigenvector for it. Okay, next, <clears throat> let's look at another eigenvalue. 
why don't we look at the eigenvalue right here, negative five. So I, this eigen eigenvalue. And let's take a look. What's an eigenvector for this? Well, it's, it's very similar. It's just a column over here. So it's something that would make x minus five equal to zero when you multiply it, any column. Um, if you thought of if you if you thought of something like that, um, and so <clears throat> because in particular, I mean, now this doesn't make too much sense if we thought of these as matrices as is. But if we think of these as scalars and this being a polynomial, in polynomial land, this is actually commutative, so this would come over. So really, you can think of this as being over here on the side if you wanted to. So let's do that. So then over here, any column in here, if we multiply it by this matrix here, x minus five, so this one right here, um, is going to be give you the zero column naturally. So because it's it's zero, it's the zero matrix. Okay, so since it's going to give, so that means that any column over here, anything in the span of the columns is going to be a eigenvector. So we can choose an eigenvector for the eigenvalue five. Let's do that for the eigenvalue five. We can choose an eigenvector. So let's just, that'll just be a column over here. Just pick one of them, simple one, maybe one, two. Great. Okay. So we have these eigenvalues and you have these corresponding eigenvectors. All right. This one and this one. Um, Okay, I guess that was a, a one, two. It's not a fraction. That's just a, I wrote a little fraction symbol. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Great. So that actually tells me exactly what D is and P is. Let's see why. <clears throat> All right. If we were to write out P as being, um, two, negative one, and one, two, notice I pick an eigenvector for this and an eigenvector for that, and guess what D is? It corresponds exactly to how I wrote down what P was. It's going to be zero, five, just like that. Very nice. Um, in particular, um, because you have a zero i so see how you have the zero eigenvalue in the first column corresponding to the first column being its eigenvector and similarly for five eigenvalue over here corresponding to that vector we were able to come up with p and d pretty pretty quickly you can double check um that that'll that it actually yields exactly what you want um in that particular case okay so um okay all right so let's go from here and keep going for a minute just explaining kind of how things works work as we go but in practice it wouldn't take as long as we explain so this is the matrix a and then um the p that we found is two negative one one two and so what we get is that a is actually equal to two, one, negative one, two, multiplied by d, which is um, zero, five, zero, zero, um, multiplied by the inverse. Now the inverse of a two by two is kind of nice. You just kind of make the, what's off the diagonal, you make, um, at least for a two by two, it works this way. You change the sign, so it'd be one minus one. And these you just interchange, but they're the same anyway, so we just keep it the same. Okay. And we need one more thing. We need to multiply by one over the determinant. The determinant of this is four um, minus um, four minus a negative one, so it'd be five. So one fifth. Okay. So this right here is the inverse, not too hard to get. The inverse for two by two, just switch to switch these entries and then change the signs of those and then divide by the determinant. So 
this is a, now to raise it to the nth power is just to put an n up here, which is just to put a five to the n right there. Wow, not too hard, right? Um, able to come up with that. So we could work out, um, we could work out this computation. In particular, why don't we, instead of working out the whole computation, let's just look for one particular entry um, in the computation. Sometimes that makes it a little easier to consider. So what if we want to figure out what the entry, um, what the entry right, uh, what, what the entry is right here in this position of the, of the final result? So that means that we're looking at something in the first row and the second column. So to get something in the first row in our calculation, we could head up the whole calculation by one zero, since we're looking at something just in the top row, whatever we compute. And since we're in the last column, we can back up our computation simply with zero, one. Okay. Now, this makes it a little simple because as we go through, look what we do. We just go like here and we just, ah, we can just pick out the first row here. That makes it a little easier. Okay. And then working back here, this actually just picks out the second column right here. So our computation just simply becomes this, just make it a little easier on ourselves here for this example. And of course, for multiplying by one fifth, that can just come out. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Okay. So. What does this mean right here? This just means to take two times the first row plus one times the second row, uh, and you're just going to row. Well, well, that's just zero five at the end. Great. Okay, and then this just means take negative one times zero plus two times five at the end. Ooh, well, that's just two times five to the end. So you get two times five to the end, and then times one over five. So that entry should actually be two times five to the n minus one. I think of that as five to the one. That is really, really cool. Two times five to the n. So this actually, in one, some sense, if you were to think of this as being like the adjacency matrix and we raise it to the nth power, then that becomes the adjacency of via uh, paths of length n, where a length n means n edges. So um, how many ways are there of getting from one place to another via n edges? Um, and, uh, and this would mean, in particular, um, coming from vertex 1 and into vertex 2. So from one vertex 1 to vertex 2, so going this way. So coming from one into vertex two, and since it's symmetric, I mean, these are gonna be the same either way, I guess. So just how many edges of length N or how many paths of length N are between these two vertices? And look, we just counted it, counted them um, because that was that entry in the nth power of the adjacency matrix. That's uh, the number of paths of length N um, between those uh, two vertices. Hope you enjoyed that and um, thanks for watching.